This is Kinetics and Equilibrium, Lesson 4. Today's lesson will focus on what is equilibrium and how does stress affect equilibrium. Some physical and chemical reactions are capable of reaching equilibrium. This only will occur when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction in a closed system, which is really important. When equilibrium is reached, it does not mean that the reactants and the products are of equal quantities. It simply means that the products and the reactants are constant. So equilibrium is represented by double arrows instead of a single arrow. A single arrow would indicate that the reaction goes one way to completion. The double arrow allows us to illustrate that the reactions are proceeding in both directions, the forward and the reverse. Equilibrium is dynamic, which means that it is constantly changing or fluctuating. Equilibrium means that the reactant and the product concentrations are constant. And this is really important because often on the Regents' exam, they'll ask what happens at equilibrium. And the only thing that's equal at equilibrium is the rate. Product and reactant concentrations are constant. So let's define equilibrium in terms of reactant and product concentrations. At equilibrium, reactant and product concentrations are constant. At equilibrium, the rate of the forward and reverse reaction is equal. So rates are equal, concentrations constant. These are two really important concepts that we need to understand. Let's talk about types of equilibrium. They occur in all closed systems, first of all. If you don't have a closed system, you're never going to reach equilibrium. It's just going to go one way. It's all about the equal rates. Now there are different types of equilibrium. There's physical equilibrium, solution equilibrium, and chemical equilibrium. We're going to review phase and solution equilibrium, but when we talk about kinetics and equilibrium, we're really focusing on equilibrium in chemical reactions. So in physical equilibrium, this occurs during a phase change. So this can occur at melting, or this can occur vaporization, condensation, or freezing. So we have solid to liquid in which the rate of melting equals the rate of freezing. And then we have liquid to gas in which the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation. And these both occur in sealed containers at the melting and freezing point or the vaporization and condensation point. Solution equilibrium occurs at a solution's saturation point. 
So solution equilibrium is talking about a saturated solution only in which the rate of dissolving is equal to the rate of crystallization. And for example, we can have NaCl solid. So the rate at which that dissolves into aqueous is also equal to the rate at which it recrystallizes. Chemical equilibrium is the one that we're interested in the most, in which the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Or we could say the rate of breaking bonds is equal to the rate of forming bonds. So in this diagram here, the forward process is A plus B yields C plus D. And this decreases in rate as time increases. At equilibrium, the forward and the reverse ratios become equal, meaning the rate at which A and B is breaking bonds and the rate at which C and D are forming bonds are equal. If we were to look at the reverse process, C and D going to A plus B increases in rate as time increases. Le Chatelier's principle is a principle that is used to explain how a system at equilibrium will respond to stress. And stress is defined as any change in temperature, concentration, or pressure. And you have to understand how each one of these different types of changes will affect a system and how that system will respond to the stress. When a stress is added to a system, the system will shift in order to relieve that stress. So when we talk about shift, we're specifically referring to either the forward reaction or the reverse reaction. So depending on what I do to the system, the system will shift either favoring the forward reaction or favoring the reverse reaction in order to relieve that stress and reestablish equilibrium. A shift is defined also as an increase in the rate of either the forward or the reverse reaction. So if I shift toward the right, toward the products, then the rate of the forward reaction increases. So we're driving the forward reaction. So that means that the reaction of the forward reactants to products is favored over the reverse products to reactants. So it favors the formation of products. it shifts left toward the reactants, then the rate of the reverse reaction increases. We're going this way, which means that the formation of the reactants is favored over the formation of the products. So it favors the formation of the reactants of the original equation. The best way to actually understand this is to look at the different types of stress and see how they apply. So we know that concentration, temperature, 
and pressure can all stress a reaction. And that reaction is going to respond to that stress in order to relieve the stress and reestablish equilibrium by either favoring the forward reaction or the reverse reaction. We're only going to look at concentration today and we'll save temperature and pressure for the next lesson. So concentration as an initial stress. The equilibrium will change or shift when a reactant or product is added or introduced or decreased, taken away, in a reaction that is at equilibrium. So when the concentration of a reactant or product is increased, the reaction will shift away from the increase in order to use up the excess. For example, if we increase H2O gas, so if I increase this, I have more H2O, that means that this concentration increases, which means the chances of collisions with NO increase, which increases the probability of an effective collision, which is going to shift the reaction to the left, favoring the reverse reaction. So the system would shift to the left, and the NH3 concentration would increase. Anytime you see these square brackets, these square brackets mean concentration. So the concentration of NH3 would increase, meaning we're producing more of it. In the next example, if I add O2, here's O2. If I increase O2, that means the concentration of O2 goes up. That means the probability of having more collisions with NH3 increases which means the probability of having more effective collisions increase overall and the reaction is going to shift to the right, favoring the formation of the products and the NO concentration would increase. If we add H2O gas, the system would shift to the left and the NO would do what? Well, we said if there's more H2O, then the probability of it colliding more with NO is going to increase. So NO is going to decrease because as H2O is increasing and colliding more with NO, the concentration of both will go down because they're favoring the formation of the products, the NH3 and the O2. And the last question says, if we added NO, so if I increase NO, which is right here, that means that the reaction is going to shift to the left, which means it will favor the reverse reaction, which means O2 and NH3 would increase. So which concentrations would decrease? H2O gas will decrease. And the NO gas is going to decrease after we add it because it will collide more with H2O to form the ammonia and the oxygen. Let's look at what happens when we decrease concentration. When the concentration of a reactant is decreased, the reaction will shift towards the side that has experienced the decrease in concentration because it wants to replace what has been removed. So if I decrease water, water's on the left, if I decrease water, the system will shift to the left and the glucose and oxygen will combine to replace the water. So it's going to favor the reverse reaction and the concentration of glucose will decrease. If we remove O2, so if I decrease O2 over here, then we're going to drive the forward reaction and the rea system will shift to the right and the carbon dioxide and water are going to collide to combine and make glucose and oxygen. So our glucose will now increase. If we remove glucose, if we decrease glucose, which concentrations will decrease? Well, if we're decreasing glucose, the reaction is going to shift to the right. It will drive the forward reaction. So the concentrations of both CO2 gas 
and H2O liquid will decrease because they are going to collide more to produce glucose to replace the loss that was removed. Trick AA. What you add, the system shifts away from. So A is for add and A is for away. TT, what you take, the system shifts towards. T is for take and T is for towards. Okay, that's it for today. In the next lesson will address what happens when temperature and pressure changes in a system and how equilibrium is affected by that.